Perseveration, a webcast brought to you by the Northern Brain Injury Association. Perseveration is a derivative of the word persevere and basically means the persistent repetition of a word, gesture, emotion, or act. It is most commonly seen in survivors of brain injuries who have suffered trauma to the frontal lobe of the brain. Without understanding perseveration, trying to talk sense, rationalize, or otherwise intervene may make the situation worse. It is important that you are aware of what is occurring and that the person may be unable to let go no matter what the negative consequence and may be unable to see other possibilities. The three most common forms of perseveration are stuck in set, recurrent, and continuous. Stuck in set perseveration is the uncontrolled and extended maintenance of a thought, activity, emotion, or topic in conversation, despite the activity or situation changing. An example is a person who continues to talk about music after a new topic has been introduced. Recurrent perseveration is the unintentional and unfocused repeating of a previous behavior when required to address a different current task demand. An example is a person who makes more loops than necessary when writing the letter M. Continuous perseveration is the uncontrollable repeating of an impression, idea, or feeling. An example is a person who names red for red and then says red again for brown, purple, orange, and yellow during a color naming task. Perseveration is not always due to an illness or injury. In fact, all human beings perseverate to some degree, but most of us never realize that we are doing it or understand why. A classic example of perseveration that we can all relate to is when a song or tune gets stuck in our head. We seem to think about it and hear it all day long. But perseveration is a huge challenge to people who cannot control it. When an individual becomes stuck and cannot become unstuck, it really sets restrictions and limits on his or her life and makes it very difficult for others to deal with them. What occurs when a person perseverates? They may begin discussing a topic but then have difficulty moving on to a new one. They may return to certain favored topics or activities more frequently than would be expected. They may persist with trying to solve a problem in a certain way beyond the point it seems clear that it is not working. And they may experience an emotion such as anger or sadness beyond the time expected for someone to emotionally move on. To give you a better idea of perseveration as experienced by a survivor of brain injury, here are a few examples. I'm trying to figure out what to do about a problem I'm having with my truck, and I can't think of anything else until it's solved. My spouse says that I talk of nothing else, and she's ready to sell the truck to put an end to the topic once and for all. I'm not happy about an incident that happened three years ago and just can't seem to let it go. I talk about it with anyone who is within earshot over and over again. I'm filling out forms or working on a project, but I never finish because I keep going back to recheck and redo what I've already done. Perseveration comes in varying degrees, and treatment requires careful evaluation to develop effective coping strategies. These can include cognitive behavioral interventions, supportive group therapy, and medications. We suggest that self-management strategies sensitive to the survivor's cognitive level and self-regulatory capacity be introduced as soon as possible. Then, as the individual learns to self-manage perseveration, assistance may be systematically reduced. Because every person's situation is unique, the problem-solving and coping strategies described in this webcast are only suggestions to guide and assist you. Before setting out on any course of intervention, always seek the advice and direction of relevant medical and mental health professionals. Now, let's get to the real purpose of this webcast, giving you some tools to help you assist a person who is experiencing perseveration. Persons with brain injuries are often very sensitive to light and visual distractions and may have challenges filtering out background noises. Just the sound of a computer running, background music, or a fountain can cause them to become overwhelmed and their senses to flood. Remove them as far as possible from disruption or noise that may make them feel distracted and anxious. Provide them with a dimly lit, quiet, calm, and distraction-free environment to discuss their behavior. And keep in mind that your tone of voice and body language can cause them anxiety too. So speak calmly and use slow body movements. 
There may be times when someone perseverating may require redirection to calm down before you begin. Such as by you saying, I'm thirsty, let's go to the kitchen and grab something to drink before we talk, with the goal of redirecting, slowing, and de-stressing things. You'll need to establish trust, so be truthful about what the person is doing and how they are coming across. You'll notice things that the survivor may not even be aware of, so engage them in constructive and creative problem solving. Give them your honest point of view, then the time they need to absorb what you have said, and then to respond. It may help them to write down your thoughts and suggestions so they can refer to them later. Limit the amount of time that you are willing to discuss their issue. Inform them of how much time you are allotting to deal with it and why. Then set a timer and stop when it goes off. How do you help someone who is perseverating? The best way to begin helping a person experiencing perseveration is with the use of cognitive behavioral interventions or coping strategies. This can be done one-on-one -on -one or in a group setting. However, be aware that when a person is perseverating, they may become upset when asked to give up their activity, topic, strategy, or emotion. We recommend that before you attempt to help anyone deal with their issue, that you take a few moments out just for you to breathe deeply, relax, calm, and center yourself. A cognitive behavioral intervention that we recommend is the six R's. Recognize, reduce, retreat, relax, rethink, and return. We have adopted them here for use with perseveration. Recognize. The person may need to be taught ways to recognize when they have become stuck on a behavior or feeling and to take action, such as asking for assistance. For example, the person's self-talk might be, I'm stuck and I need help moving on. Reduce. Reduce or remove possible triggering events. A trigger is anything that sets off their unwanted behavior. Once they learn what their triggers are, they can learn to avoid them and thus prevent an event before it starts. Have them write down all of the triggers that they already know about. Retreat. Teach them to stop and back off as soon as they feel perseveration starting. They may need to take time out or to leave. Teach them to use thought-stopping techniques, like the use of a thought, visual cue, or physical action, such as snapping a rubber band placed around their wrist. Encourage them to educate family members and friends about how a retreat works for them. Relax. Teach them to chill out and calm down. While relaxing is easy for most people, brain injury can make it difficult for survivors. Suggest that they use tools to calm their body and mind, like visualization, positive self-talk phrases, holding a symbol or talisman with positive emotions attached to it, or best of all, by using laughter. Also, teach them to redirect themselves by changing the subject, starting a new activity, moving to a different place, or thinking about a new job. Rethink. Encourage them to write out their thoughts, create and evaluate possible solutions, pick a solution, develop a plan, and then set a deadline. Teach them to look at other points of view and how other people make decisions and solve problems. Encourage them to ask others for feedback. Suggest they choose a certain time of day and location to perseverate, with it being the only time and place the behavior is allowed. Teach them to control the length of time by using a timer and stopping when it goes off. Return. Once the person has their perseveration under control and has calmed down, it is time for them to return to their regular routine and or activities. Be sure to remind them to use the six R's on a regular basis because repetition is a great teaching tool for the survivors of brain injury. Finally, medication is also sometimes used as a behavioral intervention, but treatment with medication can be complicated by an injury to the brain, so ideally the prescribing physician would have experience with acquired brain injury. When using medication, a system will need to be created and put in place to monitor how effective the medication is, its dosages, and possible side effects. This concludes the Northern Brain Injury Association's Perseveration webcast, produced to give you a better understanding of what perseveration is, its effects, and strategies to help cope with the many challenges that perseveration presents. The Northern Brain Injury Association thanks the Prince George Brain Injured Group for its contributions and assistance. Funding for this webcast was provided by the Northern Health Authority, the Province of British Columbia, and the United Way of Northern B.C. 
The Northern Brain Injury Association provides prevention, education, and support to survivors of brain injury, their families, communities, and the professionals assisting them in a geographic area that encompasses the northern two-thirds of the province of British Columbia. For further brain injury information and resources, please visit the Northern Brain Injury Association's website at www.nbia.ca or call toll-free to 1-866-979-4673.